And then from there we'll walk on to the control room. Before we do, each of you should have one of these green cards on your visitor's badge. This is From an air earthquake point of view, he built this thing to withstand the highest known earthquake in South Carolina. That's right. We look back historically at the, at the largest earthquake known, called the El Centro earthquake, and uh, so and all our foundations go all the way down the bedrock, and they're designed to stand up to 0.1 g of energy at the uh, at its foundation. Okay. What are other things that can compromise it? Still maintain their integrity. Yeah. So that's the uh, the design basis, though, is of the uh, containment is to withstand the earthquake and withstand uh, certain forms of impact. Do you think because of what happened in Japan, there will be a reevaluation of this containment I'm sure we'll go back and take a look. And uh, we do use OE from uh, any time there's an event, whether it's in the country, operating experience. So we'll go back and look at, and apply the operating experience that happened from the Japanese event and make sure that there's any lessons learned that we can apply here, we will apply those. Thank you. This is not nuclear grade material, is that correct? That's correct. Just kind of walk me through why that can't happen. Because uh, in order to have a nuclear explosion, you actually have what they call prop criticality. And uh, so these are not cores that are designed to achieve prop criticality. You need, a, you need a higher grade of uranium or plutonium that we don't have, and our reactions uh, are called slow reactions, and so you just you, this just physically, not technically possible. Phys, the physics won't so allow. So the concern is a, a radiation leak, quite frankly. That's the concern. Right? The concern from our containment would be uh, radiation leak, and then the containment is designed to uh, withstand any type of a steam explosion from inside. Thanks. structure and then we transport it out on the site to our dry cast storage facility. That nine years allows the radioactivity level to go down. It does. The radiation <laughs> levels uh, decrease and then uh, more importantly the heat load decreases. And the whole reason years. for Yucca Mountain is to take all of our spent fuel rods that are stored on site and put them in a central repository so they could be better protected and stored longer term. Correct. That was the goal for Yucca Mountain. So at this point Sandra where did Ms. Sandra go? So Sandra, what we'd like to do at this point is head for the Unit 1 and 2 control room. So if we just get the front up, we'll get Done automatically, and 
they will monitor that continuously to ensure that everything is controlled. If they have to shut it down, what would you do? We have uh, a manual push button in the front of the control room that the reactor operator is expected to manually trip the reactor if anything is if you see in unexpected conditions, and it will take about one second uh, to for the stop the fission. Hydropower in the Northwest. At the end of the day, power generation has one common thing. You create heat that turns a turbine. So nuclear power creates heat from nuclear fission that generates steam from water that turns a turbine. And at the end of the day, I feel that the redundant systems we have uh, in place after Chernobyl and Three Mile Island have served us well. But it is a time is money concept but there is no substitute for safety, and at the end of the day, I think our permitting process and our licensing process can be reformed, but we need to err on the side of safety.